Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, what does trust mean to you? <laughs> trust. <laughs> mm. What does trust mean to me? Well, I think back to my, my life about trust. I don't know what it really means. I, I don't know if I've ever had any issues with it. Um, mm -hmm. Not me personally, I, and I don't know if, I'm sure there are people that I've counted on doing something and not and having relationships with their behavior in a certain way, and then they don't do it. And I'm sure I've been disappointed by that in some way. Uh, but I'm trying to think about the somebody breaking trust. Oh, well, I can go back. I think I can go back to my first marriage. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Oh my God. They got married when I was 19 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how many years was that? Do you know? No. Six. It's a long time. Well, let me figure it out because I like to know how many years it was. <laughs> Hang on. 66 minus 19. It's 47 years ago. Yeah. 47 years ago, I was, um, I was married at 19 years old to my first wife. And when you're 19 and you get married, you don't think that there's going to be any other relationship. That's, you think that's your, mm. that's your lifelong relationship. And you don't think that there's going to be, I'm on my fourth marriage now. So it's like, I would have never have dreamed I would have had four marriages or four relationships. No. But, um, and I'm not unhappy about all of it. I think it's all really supposed to happen and then they happen for reasons and I'm glad. And then there's nothing wrong with any of that. But when I was married and when I am married, I have, I have certain, I think there's parameters or rules that you have in the relationship. And, um, you know, one of them at the, at, from the very beginning was that you wouldn't mess around with other people. Mm. You know, you would just trust that your wife or your husband would stay. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Faithful. Yeah. Thank you. Faithful, faithful. And uh, not, you wouldn't even, at this point in, in your life, in the beginning, you wouldn't even talk about being faithful. You would just, mm -hmm. you just had a belief that that's what it was going to be. And I think that was, that was called trust. You just trusted that she would be that way and you're going to be that way. And that's how it is. Mm -hmm. And three years into our marriage, I found out she had an affair with her high school art teacher. Oh wow! Yeah, and I and but I was a traveling guy. I traveled five days a week um, on the road in six states, and uh, okay. believe it or not, I was a baby portrait photographer. Okay. So, yeah, so I took baby pictures and uh, on the road. So I would go to stores and set up and take pictures and come home. Yeah. And, and I never once in my wildest imagination ever thought that I would have to be looking, looking out for my marriage mm -hmm. and my relationship at the time. And then, and then at a certain point every, every weekend or Friday night when I got home, she was different. She was really kind of a different person. So I sensed there was something going on and was wrong. And I finally pressed it and found out that she she came clean with me and she told me she was having this affair. And that, I think, was a massive, huge trust issue for me at that point. Mm. You know, I just, uh, I don't know that I could ever trust her again, really. That's Or her word, or, you know, it's, it's like, what you say and do are two different things. So, yeah, you know, you could almost apply that to, we were just talking about it 
government leaders, you know, how can you trust them when they do one thing and say another? Or say one mm -hmm. thing and do another? How can you trust anybody when they do that? Their word is worth nothing. And I grew up with believing that your word was your bond, it was your word, was, your, was gold, and that you would stand by your word. You wouldn't have to write it all down and have a lawyer legalize it and notarize it. And, and mm. did that in those days in the 50s and 60s. And if you put your, if you said, I'm going to do that, I'll be there for you, whatever, it was done. You didn't have to think about it. So I, I guess that's, that's kind of written into the ceremony, whether it's a civil or a, or a, or a religious one, isn't it? Because normally it is. To the, I, I know in the Church of England, it's to the exclusion of all others. That's part of what you're promising. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I guess that's, that's it's, it's implicit, isn't it? Well, it's that explicit, actually, because it is in the promise, in that ceremony. You're making that promise to each other. Yeah. And then when she breaks that, you know, and I find out, I'm pretty devastated. Mm. Because I was, uh, you know, 22, 22 Why? years old, you know, and when you're a 22, 23 year old young man, at least back in my day, there wasn't people like you around mm. that I knew of, you know, there weren't therapists and counselors and, no. you know, support people around and I had no way of dealing with how I really felt. No. I just had my feelings and a lot of it was pent up anger and frustration and fear and, you know, just a whole lot of that in my life. Looking back on it in retrospect, that's probably how I lived out my life after that issue yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Not knowing it, you know. Um, yeah. There was times when I got a divorce from her, I swore I was never going to get married again. Because uh, that trust, it takes, it takes a long time to rebuild trust, doesn't it? Whether, whether it's with that same person or whether to take it into another relationship. Yeah, it took me a long time. And I, you know what, I, I just decided at a certain point that, um, People are going to be who they're going to be, and there isn't anything I can do about it, you know, no matter what. As long as I stick to my word and my commitments, right. that's what matters, I think. And that's, that's kind of what I did. And, and uh, I got married again, of course. Uh, we got divorced after seven years, and then I was single for one year, and then I met another woman, and married her and then had different issues and different problems and um i don't know that she did anything outside of the marriage with another person but she had uh chemical of dependency issues in her family and she was surrounded by that whole dynamic so i learned a lot about all that <laughs> So every, yeah. time, every time I went into a new relationship, I found out about new situations and new problems that people had, you know, it was like, wow. And, uh, but I love companionship. So I, I guess I, I trust that it's going to be good for me. Yeah. yeah. Companionship. I just think it's important. It, it's quite, I think it's, it's just such a, it's an interesting subject, isn't it? Trust, you know, what it means in it. In your situation, you talked about trust and believing that a person would do the right thing. Yeah. But it is how it affects us, you know? Because I think if something bad happens in our lives, we can find it very hard to trust. But equally, I think there's the other side of it. If you've not had that care and attention, then you're going to be looking for somebody to trust in and you're going to trust easily because you want that love. Sure. So it, it's quite a, it, it's not straightforward, is it? It's not you trust because you trust. We, we either trust too readily or we trust, we don't trust readily depending on each of us and our circumstances. Yeah. And I think so yeah. many people that, 
we all crave to be, you know, we're, we're sociable beings, aren't we? So therefore we crave to have that love and affection from others because we're tribal. Yeah. So when we don't get that, we either we either get hurt so badly that we're never ever going to trust again, or we're going to trust very too easily because we, we want to be accepted in that tribe, whether it is one person or, or a group of people. Oh. And then we get trodden on because yeah. you're going to be the weakest one. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, well, I can take advantage of you because, you know, you're going to do whatever I want. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Yeah, well, I've got... To... I've got the same issues going on with my daughter. And we talked about my daughter last time, you know. Um, yeah. And now I don't care if, if she were to hear what I'm saying because I'm not saying anything bad. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying the, the truth about it. You know, she's, I trusted just because she's my daughter. I, that's my belief was that I could trust that she would be there and loving and caring. And, and, and um, she's really not. She's kind of the opposite, angry and revengeful and vengeful and um abusive and not kind and uh so i've learned that even if they if they're in your family <laughs> family uh it's like you're constantly dealing with something uh, people are estranged from their mothers and fathers i mean and their brothers and sisters and i'm sure it's all it's all about trust issues and so mm. not doing what they're supposed to do. So now I just say, hey, they're going to do what they're going to do, and i got to learn to live my life. And um, I don't want to be like that, so I don't want to condemn them. I don't want to find fault with them. I don't want to be negative about them um, as much as I can, even though sometimes I slip into the, the common urge to be negative, you know, it's like find fault with someone but they got their own life going on and they got to live it and if that's how they want to live it that's their choice I got to let it go I can't be I can't be controlling them and monitoring it and wanting and needing and uh, if they want a relationship with me I'm here if they don't want a relationship with me I'm here still but I'm not going to have one that's abusive or hurtful yeah. and I that's what I do. I just set up my boundaries now and make sure that they're clear on who I am. Mm. And I do it with compassion and understanding. And if they want a piece of that action, that's fine. If they don't, <laughs> bye. Because <laughs> I just, I don't need it, you know. I, I don't need, you don't need it. No, Nobody really needs it. I don't need the headache. I don't need the the negative garbage that comes with it. I don't want to be abused. If, if you want to communicate, you got like people have problems with each other. I mean, yeah. I'm sure people do. If you want to communicate your problems with love and care and concern, hey, I, I'm here. For, I'm going to listen to you until my ears fall off my head. I'll listen <laughs> to you all day long. But if you're going to attack and find fault and be negative and be vindictive and angry and spiteful and all those things because you have pent up emotions about something that happened 35 or 40 or 50 years ago mm. i'm not going to be the brunt of your your venting go see a counselor <laughs> <laughs> wait you're a counselor <laughs> <laughs> I can tell them to go see you. <laughs> can I, I think this is it because I think sometimes people take their trust issues into other relationships. Oh, big time. That, that's, that's the sad part about it. You know, when, when we have those lack of, you know, we feel that lack of trust or we, we've been hurt in the past, of course, or let down. But then it gets taken into another relationship. And, and I, I do believe that we've got, it's hard if, we, if our trust has been broken, we've been let down, it, it's hard. But we can't put that on somebody else. We can't take that into another relationship and say, 
well, I don't trust you. Well, hold on a minute. That you don't you, unless you've got the evidence to prove that person is untrustworthy. You've got to deal with your own issues. You can. You, I think you can say, okay, look, I I find it hard to trust, and this makes it uncomfortable for me. And I understand it's my stuff, but I'm just letting you know what it it, it triggers me or it, it it affects me badly. But you can't turn around and then say, but you've got to behave in this way, or this is why I'm lashing out at you, or because. Yeah. Because that other person, whoever they are, it's not their fault. Yeah. But I see it so many times. Oh, I bet. I bet you hear it a lot. I bet you hear that all the time from couples and people. And One of the one interesting things I, I kind of... And you, I don't know how you're going to hear this, because you talked about your first wife and what happened, but... When, I, when couples come to me and they say that they've, their partner's cheated on them, right. I, don't, I don't condone it because I think it's wrong, because it's, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't, I don't think it's right to do that. However, I, I see it as a symptom. Being unfaithful is being, you know, cheating is a symptom. So, so what else is going on? How did that other person contribute to what went wrong? Big time. It, it's not a one-way street. No, but that people find that very hard to hear. They think, oh, well, but he... No, of course, it's not right for someone to cheat. But, but what, were, what else was going on in the relationship? What else was happening? Because that's far more important. And I've done it because it's been neglected. Well, the person who cheated, their needs weren't being met. So it, that's, that's more crucial in my view. What was it? That, because that's, you, 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 yeah. You, you. Well, I would, have rather, I would have rather heard from her that she had a problem with something. Of course. Rather than her sleeping with her high school teacher, art teacher. And check this out, sleeping with her high school art teacher in my bed. Absolutely. That to me was like somebody sticking a knife in my stomach and twisting <laughs> around. And yeah. I'm, okay. Couldn't you, you know, couldn't you have just sat me down and say, I'm unhappy or uh, something's got to change or, you know, your breath is bad or you need to change the scope, you know, mouthwash or um, I don't like how you make love or... Mm. something just or I don't like the fact that you're gone five days a week every every week for three years um something that tells me how she's feeling rather than acting out yeah behind my back breaking That's a vow that we both agreed to mm. and, uh that to me damaged the entire relationship forever. I don't, Absolutely. I don't think. I don't think at that point I could have ever come back into the relationship because I didn't have you. I didn't have a counselor. I didn't have a therapist. I didn't have somebody I could talk to mm -hmm. to talk through this process of trusting and believing in her again and. You know, I gave it lip service. I did the best I could. Mm. We lasted seven years. This happened in uh, probably the third year of our marriage. And even, we even went in so far to, I kicked her out of the house. Uh, I said, you know, you've got a choice. It's either him or me, and you need to leave now while you make the decision. Well, she left, and three days later, she came knocking on the door with tears in her eyes, wanting to come back home. She'd left over to her mom's house, and because I decided at that point that this wasn't my problem. This wasn't me. This was her doing this. And so I yeah. said, you need to leave, not me leave my house. You need to leave the house. So that's what I told her. And I gave her an ultimatum at the time. And I don't know if that's the right thing to do either. But I just said, it's either, either you leave and live that life with him or you live life with me and let's work through it. 
And then we decided to have a kid, uh, as it, like that was going to solve the problem, you know. We said, well, if we have a kid, then we'll be able to, to have our marriage back again. And sure enough, she got pregnant and had a, the one and only child that I am. And then shortly after that, when she was four years old, we got divorced because the marriage couldn't hold up. It just couldn't hold yeah. up at that point. Like a band-aid baby. Yeah, well, it was like, uh, you know, if we have a baby, then we're going to be okay. Yeah, exactly. And it was, it was uh, the, not a good thing. We shouldn't have had a baby. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we did. And it wasn't okay. And it was never okay. And it never healed. And it was always mm -hmm. sore. And we carried it around with it. And it was, then it turned into anger and spitefulness and then fighting and arguing and that's when mm. it, that's when we just i just said that time to leave you know seven years of that you know and it's like okay well four years of it at least and um it didn't get better it got worse the whole time and so that's what i brought into the second marriage <laughs> isn't that fun well, what a cool dynamic i brought that i brought yeah. that scene and, and then I was with another lady I met another lady who was pretty manipulative you know and uh, again I didn't realize that but that's what I fell into and she knew how to she knew how to kind of manipulate her way into my life and I was looking for someone to, to be with and I needed companionship you know so there was another one that was just one repeat after another. But it's all mm. it's always it's all about learning as we go, you know. It's like definitely, have, definitely. And I think, you know, going back to the first marriage, you your your wife definitely wasn't able to she didn't have she didn't have the ability to communicate with you. No. So, you know, that's that's the problem. And it you, if you were able to talk to each other and say, oh, well, I'm not happy, and for the other person to hear it. But you know what happens is, when somebody says, says, you know, I'm unhappy, the other person immediately feels it's their fault, and it, and it drives the stakes through their heart because they feel that they're being criticized. Right. Well, that's what they do. So that's, that's what a big problem because people not, personalize everything yeah exactly instead of saying being curious and saying what is it tell me more about why you're unhappy yep. they'll say you're unhappy that's it i've done everything i've uh, done x y and z i put a roof that's over your head i'm doing all this and there's no way back from that because you can't have a conversation with someone no it's really difficult it's really hard, isn't it? And that learning how to be able to communicate and listen, I find it, you know, with all my experience, I still, if I find with my family, if someone says something to me and, and they're speaking their truth, I find that quite hard at times yeah. because I immediately go back into my pattern. It's triggered me, you know, it's that almost my DNA. Like, yeah. oh my God, I've screwed up. I know. I'll go back into that. I'm not good enough. I, which was my mantra for I don't know how many years. Yeah, I, I'm with you all the way. I mean, really? that's all, it's a, it's a, such a powerful learned pattern and behavior that when people hang on to it. And mm. you see, it's all over social media all the time. I mean, you can see oh, it. Yeah. People with their anger and frustration and blame and then they do things and it's exactly what they were, they do exactly what was done to them. Yeah. And they think that it's okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's just crazy. But see my first wife, just like my second wife, came from a family of alcoholism. Ah. Uh. And I'm talking serious alcoholism, I'm not talking Okay. Oh, he did some drinking on the weekends, and no, we're we're talking about she grew up, um, and it's amazing when I look at my life, all my my first marriage, my second marriage, and my third marriage, 
all had a pattern in their history of alcoholism. Wow. And so I, I was a premier, I f- figured it out over the years uh, that I mm. was, I was a guy that was always looking to take care of somebody and that I could fix them and um, make their life better. And then we could live happily ever after. Like the white knight, you know, and right into the sunset and they'd be on my horse and we would be happy and live our lives happily ever after. Yeah. So I didn't think like that then, you know, I didn't see myself uh, like that. But no, I could, it's not conscious, is it? It's just, no, no, yeah. that was my pattern. You know, I was going to yeah. fix they came from a horrible family life. The father or the mother were alcoholics. We're talking severe and abusive alcoholics. Mm-hmm. Um, my third, my first wife came from an alcoholic father. My second wife came from an alcoholic father, and she was an alcoholic and dependent person. My wife and my third wife's father died of alcoholism. They found him in his apartment with his t-shirt on and a bottle of vodka in his hand and he was dead on uh, leaning up against the wall sitting down on the floor and she was she lived with that that behavior my third wife lived with that behavior physically and emotionally from the day she was born until she was 14 that was her father that's what she saw so she had massive talk about trust issues she had massive trust issues about whether or not she could trust a man to be there for her. She didn't have a father figure at all. She had an alcoholic father who was killing himself and never followed through on anything. And everything Mm -hmm. spun around this guy his whole life. And uh, that's what she was, she grew up with it. So So you, from your point of view, you could could take on the caring role. Sure. But what was it? I wonder what they were looking for because they didn't have good role models. So they were looking for something, or were they looking for a father figure? Probably. Person I was who 14. would be more caring. Well, ah, I, right. I was 14 years older on my third wife, and I was younger yeah. on my, I was one or two years younger on my first wife, and I was um, four or five years younger on my second wife, but they were all history of severe alcoholism mm. yeah. no and you were going to solve the problems for them yeah but they they weren't able to solve their own problems no well they had problems to begin yeah. with and it was all about trust and i didn't realize it but i mm. i figured i could help them out and i didn't say that when i met them either i didn't say oh i can fix this no i just uh. was attracted to them for that reason and it was amazing how you attract your, you get attracted to this situations that you just came from that you didn't really resolve in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> so now Catherine is my fourth wife and she's the first person that I'm married to in my fourth marriage that comes from a family of no chemical dependency, no alcoholism. Uh-huh complete to me complete normality um they like have this massive five kids in the family father mother live together all went away all genius people really intelligent and they all get along with each other there's no conflicts there's no fighting Mm. they've had disagreements over the years but you would never know meeting these people. And I, and I met Catherine and I went, wait a minute. I don't, I feel pretty uncomfortable with this. Yeah. Says, what do you mean uncomfortable? I says, I've never not needed, I've never, I've never been in a situation where I'm not needed by the other person to do something. Yeah. She says, what do you mean? I says, well, and then I had to explain the whole thing to her. I says, I'm out of place here. I don't, you don't need me. You can live your life without me happily. Ah. And, uh, well, yeah, of course I can. And I go, well, wait a minute. I, I, I'm supposed to fix something here. You know, I'm the ultimate in fixers, you know, I I can. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, that was like, I was out of a job. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, exactly. So that must have felt really, really strange. Oh, yeah. And I think that's why people, when they find something that's okay or something good, they shy away from it simply because, well, this doesn't feel right. No, oh, big time. Big time. And you've heard that all day. I don't know, maybe you've never heard that adage before that uh, girls like to be with the bad boys. Oh, God, yeah. I've been, I've been there myself when I was younger. You know, yeah. They're not attracted to the... To the they, nice boys. The healthy no. ones. Or no. They seem to be attracted to the bad boy doing the on-the-edge risky things, you know. And that's more attractive, you know. And I'm thinking... That's kind of the way I was, you know. I wasn't attracted to the bad boy. I was attracted to the the girl that wasn't doing so well. It came from a really horrible place, and I'm going to make it good, you know. This yeah. is kind of the same thing, kind of the same thing. And I'm and I didn't have, you know, the the good boy thing going. Look at me, I'm not the good boy, you know. I've had my checkered past and learn to act out in certain ways and do yeah. my thing and experiment with my drugs and my behavior. Trust me, you know, I'm no, I, I'm no, I'm no white knight on a horse riding around with the perfect track record of behavior. That's for sure. Yeah. But that's what I learned. You know, I just learned that now I just let all of that go. I don't worry about whether I can trust people. I try, here's what I do. Yeah. I trust them all. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. I trust them. I trust everybody I meet. I trust them until they break that their word. Then I make a choice whether I want to be around them. Okay. And if I want to be around them, then I have words with them about what they've done in their behavior or what I think in my behavior, and we discuss it and talk through it. That's if it's valuable enough to be around. Because I have to look at my life now at 66, and I go, I don't have a lot more years left on the planet. In fact, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, quite frankly. I'm at the end. Begin, I, I like to say I'm at the beginning of the end of my life. Catherine says, oh, no, you're not. You're only middle-aged, you know, because she, <laughs> she wants me to live another 120 years, you know. <laughs> she, she thinks I'm going to live to 150, and I go, well, I don't know if I want to be 150. Going to be <laughs> like this. And she, she, but that's how she sees it, because she's, she got married when she was 45 years old. First and only marriage. I'm going, uh, wow, I wish I could have done that in my life. But then I look back over and I go, it was meant to be the way it was. Yeah. You know, and you learn from everything that I, and I never went to school and I never, never read any books. And now I, now I counsel counselors. Now I teach therapists. Now I work with psychiatrists now i teach psychiatrists how to deal with teenagers at self-harm so there's all kinds of things that i do that yeah. i don't think i could have ever thought about doing had i not gone through all of those issues including trust okay. I, physically i don't yeah, think, I don't think that's it because i think that well, there is a saying the wounded healers and I think that's it because if you know, people say to me, well, a friend said to me, how can you be a relationship? How can you work in relationships and couples and stuff? You're not married. You've not, you know, and I've got, hold on a minute. If I've been happily married for 35 years and never, never experienced all the things that I've experienced, well, how would I know what it was like to go through all those bumps in the road? How can I say to somebody, well, you can't tell someone this is how you have to live your life. No. You know, and, and I think it is, I always say to my clients, you know, I, uh, I've earned these wrinkles. I may not experience what you've experienced, but I've earned these wrinkles, trust me. Yeah. And that's it, because you and I have had those life experiences. So we're not going to say, well, I know what it's like for you, but we can say, okay, we tap into it. Ah, and then you can ride alongside that person for a while, challenging their thought processes, challenging the way of their behaviors, and allow them to make their own decisions. That's right. But it's because, because we've been through those situations, isn't it? Well, I got a, my second wife, her name was Chris. 
my first wife's name was Marcia, and my second wife's name was Chris, and um, she was an alcoholic and had alcoholic issues and came from an alcoholic family. And she put it out there that I had alcoholism. After a year or two of marriage, she was unhappy and was exhibiting these behaviors and said that it wasn't, the problem was I had chemical dependency issues. So I had to stop drinking to be in that marriage with her. Oh. Well, not only that, but I then we started counseling and I started going to see a counselor who she was of the Jungian theory. Have you heard of Jung? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So anyway, her name was Mary Welch, and she was quite a bit older than me. She was in her 60s. And um, I went and saw her once a week for five years. Do you believe that? And then I went to the a I went to an AA meeting. For five years, I went to an AA meeting once a week. And I went to the counselor individually with Mary once a week. For five years so can you imagine what I learned <laughs> about the disease of alcoholism because I wasn't an alcoholic but in order to appease her and stay in the marriage I agreed to go wow and I tried to convince myself that I had an alcoholic problem and um <laughs> it was really weird, man. It was, I felt like I was lying all the time, but mm. I was learning. You know, I was learning about it. And I learned about the disease, and I learned what, what it meant, and I learned how people are... And I learned about addiction, and uh, <laughs> I learned about... Talk about trust. There isn't any trust there. Yeah. I mean, if someone <laughs> has a relationship with... Um alcohol, gambling, porn, I don't know, whatever you want, drugs. They, you can't have a relationship with somebody who's, who's got that relationship with that, that thing. Addiction. Addiction, because that's where, their, that's where their relationship is. Everything in an addictive personality, everything centers around them. So their behavior is in the middle and all of the activities that go on around the outside of them are to cater to their addiction. And uh, You know what? I think that'll be a really good discussion for another time. 